Welcome to RVing in New England, the nation's only forum that puts you on stage with some of the biggest names in the RV industry. And now your hosts, John DiPietro and Bob Zagami. I'm sorry, that was a little bit of a hiccup there in the beginning, and uh, there you are. I hope that's okay on your end. It, uh, the network crashed on me, and I had to reboot it. But anyway, well, it's one did a good job. Evening, Pedro. How are you? I'm good, but I thought I was a guest tonight, so I didn't have to do any of this opening stuff. Oh, you're right. You are. I, was I gonna... told you. You are. That's right. You, that's oh, right. my Goodness, yes, we probably in all confused here. We, we probably shouldn't treat our guests like that, Bernie. Right? <laughs> exactly. It's nice like you stick them right in on there. You didn't well, even know what was coming. How would you? Dump them down the green room. We can have an extra piece of cake or a couple of chocolate chip cookies while we kick the show around. And uh, what's what's the topic tonight, Bernie? Why is this one important? Well, this one's really important because we're going to be talking with John, who's been on the Do It Now tour for the last month. It's been so exciting, so extraordinary. Some of the experiences that he, Mary Beth, and, and Mila have had are, are unbelievable. But, you know, Bob, I, I just want to back up a little bit. Like earlier today, you had sent me an email, and it really had a, a, a big impact on me, and I want to thank you for that. Do you remember what you said to me in that email? Be yourself. Bernie, just be be Uncle Bernie. Be yourself. Uh, well, thank you for that. So whether I'm right or whether I'm wrong, you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know, so either way, either way, Bernie. Yeah, whether I find a place in this world or never be long. I gotta be me. I gotta be me. What else can I be but what I am? I want to live, not merely survive. And I won't give up this dream of life that keeps me alive. I gotta be me. I gotta be me. The dream that I see makes me who I am. Did you did did you pay <laughs> did you pay for those music lessons, Bernie? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I couldn't resist. I couldn't resist. Thanks, Bob, for letting me do that. Uh, All right. Let me. Uh, I know you want to intro John tonight, so but yes. let me let me first put up our sponsor who's yeah, coming to the yep. end of their reign. Our sponsor for the last six months has been Seacoast RVs Route One in Saco, Maine, creating family fun on Route One, uh, number one crop park model dealer in the country, the newest Winnebago motorized dealer in Maine the newest Elevation Park model dealer in Maine. Go up and see Kenny and Amanda. Kenny and Amanda are the owners. Amanda is the general manager. Kendra Smith is the service manager. Brittany Creamer is the sales manager. Great bunch of people, good service, good part, large parts and accessory store, and we sincerely appreciate them uh, being our sponsor for the last six months and wish them well. They'll, their last sponsorship week will be next week. All right, sir. Yeah. So what, do you, what do you think? So I, I don't know. After that opening, Bernie, I, I don't know. Should I let you introduce to Petro? Um, yeah, I know. It's up to you if you want to take I'm, the I'm, chance I'm, or not. He's, uh, I'm, I don't know, Bernie. I'm almost afraid of what you might do. But, uh, <laughs> Did I blow all your speakers? Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to take another chance with you. I told you to be yourself. and All right. Just be Uncle Bernie. So I'm going to give you the full screen, and you can introduce our special guest tonight. All right. Well, hey, folks. We are so excited to have John DePietro back here um, in, in our auspices. You know, he's back in New England and he's home and he stopped eating that Bucky's and all that other stuff. But I have another little special thing for Johnny, too. So um, this is it. And this is Johnny's intro. My Johnny's all over the East Coast. From OOB to St. Augustine, and just doing it on the Do It Now tour. Oh, bring back my Johnny to me. Bring back, bring back, bring back my Johnny to me, to me. Bring back, 
Bring back, oh, bring back my Johnny to me. Across the Chesapeake from Delaware to Virginia, down the Carolinas in Georgia by the sea, went to campers in all over the East Coast. Just bring back my Johnny to me. Everybody, welcome John DePietro. You can bring him back. Hey, John, wake up. (laughs) Hello. Good evening. (laughs) You guys are nuts. I was looking for my earplugs. <laughs> Don't you Bernie, love me, John? Bernie, Don't that is um, me. that that's just just remarkable. Let's just leave it at that. <laughs> All right. Let's just say remarkable. Let's see what our audience thought yeah, of that. Well, wait a minute. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Audience, chime in there. See if I uh did it, John some justice on his it, it, it didn't on take him long. Jim Roy says, good evening, guys. I'm early. Uh, Monica says, me too, and they're late. I we, you're, you're right, Monica. I was late, but my network crashed just after it got done with the 60-second uh, clock down. So that, my, my, that was my fault. Um, Ellis, where is Jerry? Ellis Haven Campground in Plymouth, Mass. Dante's wow. there. Evening, guys. I hope you're enjoying your new motorhome, Dante. Uh, you haven't posted any pictures or anything. Jerry Plant, if John keeps complaining, he can be he can be a permanent guest. <laughs> Jim Convoy, hello all. Okay, Jim Convoy. Bernie. Nice rendition. All right. Oh, there you go. Got yourself a Thank fan you. club there. Oh, oh, th- huh? th- were you aware that Jim Convoy, because of the work that he's done working in the factory all those years, is is partially deaf? No. <laughs> Bernie got that. Bob didn't. <laughs> okay, I get it now. All right. Bernie, I just did one of Bernie. Oh, he just did one of oh. your one of your employees' grand design solitude with a brand new New England RV roof, flex armor roof. All right. That's fantastic. I mean, that's gonna be the best roof in the industry. I'm really excited for you, for my customers, for everyone who uses your your services for sure. Do you know? Uh, do you know who had the grand design as one of your employees? You know, I think I do know. My buddy uh, Tim is is a, co- a colleague of mine that owns a, uh, a solitude. So okay. I will say this: in all the RV, in all of the campers, in places that we visited, um, you saw grand design on several of the lots. Oh, it's a very popular product for sure, yep. yeah. and we're very proud to be uh, representing that product line. Hey, yeah. Frank's up there with his gang, uh, the Cavosas. The Coles aren't there, but the Cavosas are there. They're up at that Swan Lake. Uh, Where is that? Resort that Tom Zabrowski, up in New York, up on the, uh, I'm not sure if it's on the lake, um, but it's a beautiful resort. They got a, the whole group up there. They, It's one of their pig outs of the year. You know, they set up their, like 10 grills and Frank gets in there and cooks everything under the sun. We should crash one of their breakfast parties. Right. Hey, before I go any further, let me ask this question. Um, What our audience knows about Blackstone grills, whether I should invest in a Blackstone grill. Just tell us your uh, Put your comments on that. Hey, Jim actually has a bachelor's in musical education. See? He's a musical genius. And he can hear. He he, he (laughs) is. You're not, but he is. Uh, Very exciting. Ryan, good evening. I came out right in time for the opera, opera singing. Ryan spent the weekend with his lovely wife, Amy, up at uh, New Hampshire Motor Speedway. Speedway. And yep. uh, left the kids with the grandparents, and they had a nice weekend up at the track. Happy and summer Susan. from Jim and oh, me. Susan. Hello, Susan. Happy summer from Jim and me. Bernie, you know Jim Keenan? I don't you think can- so. You got to know him. He he was working uh, last at Pete's, but he worked at McDonald's. He worked at uh, several RV dealerships in the area. He retired last year and bought himself. Uh, actually, I think uh, Susan didn't. Didn't you guys buy a, a Georgetown? Also, that's what Dante's got. Uh, I think they bought it. Uh, he's retired now. Uh, comes wow. back and helps out when when they need him. But Jim was one of the one of the great sales. He he was in the same vein. Uh, I'd put him in there. As uh, Reiny Layberger, who I noticed who posted his birthday this year, Reiny. yeah, uh, but he worked with Reiny. 
uh, down at McDonald's and had had the same his customers had the same respect for him. They came back year after year. Didn't make a difference where he worked. They would follow Jim. Uh, good hard worker at the show. Fantastic. And, and I'm glad to see they're getting to enjoy the fruits of the labor, and they they are doing it now, as we like to say, John. Yep, yep. And you know what? We got a lot of grill people. Really? Yeah. Um, okay. Jerry says Blackstone won't run on a Quick Connect propane tab unless you get a conversion kit from Blackstone. Yeah. No, Jerry. What what I'm looking at is I'll just get those little containers, those little canisters from uh, uh, Coleman. The Coleman. Yeah. Right, Ryan. Ryan's, Ryan's a two burner. Ryan's a big outdoor cook. He's got a smoker. He's got yeah. grills. He's got, he, oh, he, wow. Sounds like he's got one of everything. So uh, I assume I assume he took the Blackstone up to New Hampshire with him so he could, you know, serve his lovely wife breakfast in bed during the NASCAR race. I mean, that's got to be romantic, right? Sounds it. <laughs> 17 is oh. good for two, says Convoy. Monica says, I want to get one. Susan says... Jayco Precept. Okay, Prestige. That's oh. right. They, they sold Jayco's with Pete's and what have you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Susan. You, you uh, missed one there. Susan also mentioned that she uses the Camp Chef uh, grill. So that's, I, I haven't seen that one, but. Yeah, I've heard of that. I've heard of that too. Yeah. Uh, okay. I just got the idea. See, Jim, Jim is out with a knee replacement. Well, that kind of no sucks. Fun. Yeah, that'll. That, That'll cramp your driving style, so hopefully he's recovering. So so he's out with a re knee replacement, but that means he must be sitting in his comfortable recliner watching the show tonight, right, Susan? I, I assume. I would imagine, yeah. Hey, let's get back to John. He's back. You know, we got to give him a little quality time. Give him a little later time. Yeah, so if you don't mind, you know, John – one of the most uh, you had a lot of great videos while you were traveling but one of the ones that was the most organic and most kind of like off the cuff and and it was very effective is when you were sitting at a picnic table with the ocean in the background and you were live on this show yeah. and then you, it wasn't actually a, that's why we couldn't find it, it was actually <laughs> one of these shows bob it was right. the last yeah. show. thank you you sent me yeah. on, right you sent me on a wild goose chase I sent you on a wild goose chase, chase. Yeah, live but, segment good burning you were, you're doing a live show on our being in new england and you just kind of wave people over like get over here let's talk and come to find out the two people that you interviewed well one was a, a woman who who her boss said you know if you want to go and take your girls around the country yep. go do yep. it Yep. And uh, and the other guy was a retired military, just had been retired for a few weeks, and he was doing like a big one-month tour. They were both on Do It Now tours. How impactful was that to you? Well, you know, the amazing thing is this. Um, we found so many people that since COVID have said, I'm not waiting. I'm not waiting. I'm, I'm you know, I hate to use the term, I'm doing it now. And the lady who had... Uh, two daughters with her, you know, mm -hmm. right after, right after the show, Mila hooked up with the two daughters. They became fast friends. They've been exchanging emails, etc. In fact, they said, oh, can we sleep in your RV tonight? Or you sleep with us and all that other stuff. But we were leaving early in the morning. So we never got the chance. But the, one of the things that I wrote down is that kids are very adventurous and, um, Sometimes adults won't go up to other adults and talk with them, but kids do. And um, that was pretty cool. Um, I think because you're a kid at heart, you were able to get them to just jump in, right? <laughs> well, you know what? <laughs> the funny thing is they, um, and that was out, that was a KOA in. Um, Outer in Banks, was it? Outer Banks, yeah. West Kuratuk in the, in there. And they put us right on the water. You know, special thanks to the outdoor world people and the KOA people. They just put us in phenomenal water, water, water edge sites. So consequently, um, a lot of people that we'd be walking around, they'd say, oh, hey, who are these people here? Because they've got one of the best sites in the place. Um, and I just happen to call people over and say, hey, we're live. So if you're wanted by the police, don't come on because they'll find you. But everybody was just having fun and you know when you take three weeks vacation which i've never done in my life never done in my life um 
you're able to unplug your mind from the business world and you're thinking like a kid and you're just having fun. Um, you know, this trip was 3,400 miles. You know, we started right up at your place, Bernie, at yeah. um, Campers Inn in Merrimack, 13 states, 18 campgrounds, <whistles> two buckies. <laughs> Only two? Only two. Um, one Royal Farms. One wa uh, several Wawas and one Spinks, a new place down in North Carolina. How many Waffle Florida. Houses? And uh, two Waffle Houses. Come on, ah. John. More than two. It looked like you were eating there every day. Every other day. No, we tr um, let's see. One. No, there was just two. One of them we tried to get into. We did, we, we did a lot. We went live on RVing in New England. We went live. And I thought I had a parking space. And as it turned out, it was parking for the Dunkin' Donuts, which was right next door. So, so I had to leave there. Right. Did you go to the Waffle House next to Campers Inn? In, uh, where was Wes? In North Carolina? Yeah, Kings no. Mountain. Yeah, he's uh, in Kings Mountain. No. You said, no, you, you pointed the camera towards the Waffle House on the other side of the parking lot. But you yeah, didn't let's see. Yeah. yeah, that was in Kings Mountain. Kings Mountain, yeah. With Wes. Yeah, that, that's right. And, and Bernie, you had Wes on your show, right? Oh, yeah. He, he was yeah. a regular on our show. He, I'll tell you. He's such a strong personality and, and such a gentle, you know, southern gentleman. Just fantastic person all around. And he, he's, a, he's a fantastic, uh, yeah. you know, yeah. a, a, a story of someone who can come out of virtually nothing and then come right, right into and now he's leading that store. Right. Um, and he was, a part of, huh? he was a high school teacher. And he was a high school teacher. And then he came in and worked in the parts store. Parts department. And, yep. Yeah, he was just like a, a guy you like stocking the shelves and, and ringing up the register and stuff. And a year and a half later, he's GM. And I mean, obviously, he had a little bit of hook spot and, and a lot of get go and wanted to, you know, <laughs> make yeah, an impression. He did a great job, did a great job in that well, interview. I, and then I, right I, after the interview, I found out that he was on with you. So yeah. we talked. Yes, there was a um, there was, but that was nine in the morning. Uh, I, I don't know what we did after that. I'll tell you after it becomes a blur. But I will tell you this. The reason I was able to find out how many miles we did, how many states we went to, how many campgrounds is the RV trip wizard, because I just pulled it up right here and it's all right there in the miles. We went. And um, but the other thing that I that I found out and I know you were going to ask me, but I found out a few tips not a few tips, but a few things that I see going on in the, in the camping um, lifestyle today. And you want me to tell you a couple of those? Well, well oh, why, don't sure. we let Bernie, let, why don't we let Bernie ask you that question, and then you can answer it. Bernie, ask me a question. Yeah, what's, what are some of the tips that you learned along of lifestyle in the RV business uh, that, while you were on your trip? Well, Bernie, that's an excellent question. Thank <laughs> you so much for asking. I've thought of a few things. <laughs> Campers today are camping with kids that are much younger than just five years ago. You know, five years ago, you'd see the, the family with the 10 year olds that was off in the playground. OK, on this trip, we saw so many families with kids in strollers. Wow. And, um, you know, sometimes two kids in strollers where one parent's pushing one and, and another one. Um, the other thing we saw is several three generation families where we had the grandparents, the parents and the kids. Several times we saw that. Wow. Uh, another point that I saw was campers are not just traveling with one dog, but ironically, the vast majority of people that we saw with dogs had two dogs. And I'm not talking, Bob, you got your dog, any of your dogs with you? <laughs> okay it's amazing so, how patient they are the whole show th yeah, those are just, quiet they just sit there and you know they're both. little dogs they probably weigh what 10 pounds each nah, they don't even weigh, yeah, probably 10 10 to 12 pounds each yeah okay what i'm seeing is people with these giant burmese mountain dogs hey the pulps um, the pulps travel with three dogs right exactly exactly yeah exactly so, so I just yeah, go ahead. Yeah. You know, that's that's kind of amazing. And then there's a few other things, but go ahead. Yeah, I was just thinking that, you know, we're seeing the same thing in the dealership 
where we there's a lot of people with strollers out there. And yeah. I got a name for the generation of kids that are growing up just, you know, in the one or two years old now, they're going to be COVID boomers. Is what COVID they boomers. Be. Okay. Yeah. A new, yeah, a new they're, they're booming. Yeah, there's a lot of them. <laughs> yep. The other thing that I, I would recommend people to do is get, if your schedule allows. Now, again, there are some situations where you've only got a short period of time to, to do your whole trip. Stay off the interstate highways. Take the, take the state routes and the local routes. Because here's why. You see the cities and towns. You go through the cities and towns. You see how tiny some places are. And yet the other thing you want to do is stay away from the big cities. Um, we learned to stay away from Atlanta. And um, if you've got a question on anything, go to one, several Facebook groups that have RV interest at heart. Like, for example, I use RV tips a lot. It's over 220,000 people. Wow. And I asked about going to the aquarium in Atlanta. And everybody said, stop. Do not attempt to drive to the aquarium. So I said, well, what do I do? They said, go to the Cumberland Mall, which is on just outside, you know, the, the, the Ring Highway, the Route 895 or whatever the road was. Like and our parked there. Yeah. And then jump on an Uber, which is what we did, which was great. We, we parked for free. We didn't have to worry about downtown traffic. Okay. Um, well, you know, that's, that's wonderful, John. You know, I'd like to reach out to the audience tonight because I know they've been faithful keeping an eye on you this whole time. And I want to hear from them. And, and please get ready to start typing, folks. What was your favorite leg of the Do It Now tour? Tell us about you know, which one was most important to you? And then, John, maybe we'll start to elaborate on that. And it doesn't have to happen this second. But no, I just no. want... And I'll, I'll tell you what, if... Yeah. Um, before they start pumping in there, yeah. if, if they post one that John agrees with that was his best, if they match up with what John says, I will give them a free book of from David Merman Scott called Fanocracy, How to Win Fans for Your Business and Customers for Life. So even if you don't own a business, you will enjoy this book because it's a multitude of small success stories and things people did to be successful in their business. So the one that comes close to matching John's uh, view of that same question, we'll, uh, we'll give him a book. Fantastic. So and that's a great, insightful book. I've read most of that book myself and – Boy, you can learn a lot about business and a lot about just the, our, today's culture and, and how to approach people and how to get out to them, you know. So, um, okay, earlier, so let's, yeah, let's go ahead. You, Bernie, no, Bernie, ch chase it down. Go back to where they started pumping the questions, see what they got for comments. All right. So, let me back this up a little bit. So, wow. That one? Is it start there? I think. Yeah, 800 campsite one, right. All right. Now, the 800 campsite, that would have been uh, what, John? Carolina Pines? Yeah, Carolina Pines. Okay. So you do reserve your judgment until we see who's here. Yeah. And then you tell me who's closest. Got to be Savannah. Be Savannah. Yeah, great. Okay. Savannah, Georgia. Right. And Out so of Banks. Out of Banks for a few years, and it's absolutely beautiful and off the grid. So he's got the out of it. So we got three different ones right there. So. Yeah. Jim says, want to know if John stocked the shelves in the Dynamax with Chef Boyardee. <laughs> well, if he did, he didn't put it on a video, Jim, so that doesn't count. But that's a good question. I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> it is possible. <laughs> Susan says, where can we find the Do It Now tour? Sorry, I've been out of the loop for a bit. Well, this is the last night, Susan. But if you go back and look at our last four uh you know, we archive all the shows on the Facebook page, same page you're looking at now. Go up under videos at the top and go back the last three or four, and John reports every week. And we brought Bernie in as our co host because John was, we didn't know if John was going to be available or we had videos or what have you. So you got three or four weeks that you can go back and catch up uh, and see all of the Do It Now videos. But uh, 
John, why don't you explain the, the ending and, and what you're doing at the ending, and then we'll watch for a couple of more comments. Yeah, there's actually a lot more videos because he was posting every day almost. So in right, between right. the weekly one, there was a bunch of them. Yeah, on the, yeah. Web, yeah, and, on the Facebook page. You know what? Yeah. It's so hard to say what was the best part. Um, you know, I hate to be a party pooper and say I, I can't pick one. I asked Mila what her favorite. Well, well, see, let me let me stop you there. See, if, yeah. if you had asked me, see, I'm like, I don't qualify for the book because I'm the host, but I also have a case of books. So if you had <laughs> asked me, I would say the best part was when you and Mila communicated over breakfast at the Waffle Houses. Yeah. That's yeah. a beautiful thing. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah. I have a favorite too, John, just so you know. And it's that interview with Carl. The, the, the golf Carl, the golf, golf cart guy. You're going to see more of that tomorrow. More, you're yeah. going to see more of that. We're going national with that this week. I love the it. The report show. That's, 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 that's <laughs> such a funny, <laughs> entertaining. Here's the thing. Actually, we'll like, you got to be kidding me kind of video. We alluded yeah. to this earlier. We're at Frontier Town in Berlin, Maryland. And uh, it was our second night. And this guy goes buzzing by with a golf cart that looked like a uh, utility vehicle. It was so high up in the air. And it had all these lights coming out from under it that were changing colors. <laughs> and he's playing some pretty heavy country music. And I just waved to him and they waved back. And you know, then he goes around the corner again. Of course, I can hear him at the other side of the park. And this was a 700... 700 space park so you know you couldn't see from one end to the other but i talked to the guy the next morning and and he was great and um, um we, we have that somewhere here to take a look at the other yeah. thing i figured out in this trip is don't overpack one reason if you're doing a different city each day like we did or two days in a couple cities Nobody who saw you on Monday is going to see you on Tuesday. So you can wear the same clothes. I happen to wear this shirt for 17 days in a row. <laughs> Only kidding. Only kidding. Oh, the it's other thing is bring plenty, of, bring plenty of quarters for the, for the oh, washing laundry. machine. But, but, you know, that that is a tip that you see often on full-timer sites because we're so used to, you know, taking a shower every day, changing yeah. clothes every day. But full-timers don't do that. Yeah, they, 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 you can get five or six, you know, days out of a shirt as long as you're not out playing pickleball. Right, or, right. Uh, now underwear, that's a different story. But the whole point, and and I should say in this, in this Dynam Dynamax Europa, one of our one of our sponsors, um, the, the shower was was bigger than the shower we have at our house at the Cape, and we would had the Truma hot water, so we had hot water instantly and lots of it. Uh, and it was great to take a shower because down in Florida and Georgia and North Carolina and South Carolina, it was hot. It was hot. So, um, you know, with that being said, bring plenty of quarters. The other thing is I wrote, don't go into the big cities, park outside the cities and Uber in if you need to. Now, there are some people that insist on towing a car. That's fine if you want to do it. We did not feel that at any time did we say, oh, we wish we had a car. Hey, Ryan's got a solution for you. I saw that. Yeah. So that's, that <laughs> way oh, everyone else Jerry, can smell it, but Jerry. you don't have to. Yeah. <laughs> Jerry and oh, hey, Jerry, Jerry's, Jerry's, the same on, thing. Jerry's okay. on the same mindset. Yep. We have a high class group of. Uh, that's camping. That's camping. A high right class there. audience here. I mean, okay. Uh, Bernie, I'm going to let you do a commercial. Uh, how's oh, that? you are. You want to do a commercial? Uh, uh, do you think Bernie should be doing a commercial for another dealership? No, he shouldn't. Yeah, Good probably point. not. I, I should probably do Good. one talk about my that's, dealership later on. That's, yeah, That's why we bring John along. All right. All right. So I've, I've go, John. Sponsored, for the past six months and for one more week next week is Seacoast RVs on in Saco, Maine, Route 1, creating family fun on Route 1. And I stopped over there uh, today uh, and, and took a couple of pictures. And they are stocking. They have park models in stock again. I guarantee you, folks, that's one, two, three, four, five, six 
park models in stock. This is a dealer that at the beginning of the year has 50 park models in stock. This, this is testimony to how difficult it is for all of our nerve to dealers to get the inventory they want to meet the customer demand. But they've got six new ones up there and, and you want to hustle for that. And they just got their very first Winnebago view. They've had the Revel, they've had the Errors and some of the others, but they just got their Winnebago view an absolutely beautiful unit with the 24D floor plan, which has the Murphy bed in the back. And that's available. That probably won't be there within a week or two. But visit Seacoast RVs on uh, Route 1 in Saco, Maine. Kenny and Amanda Blow, fantastic sponsors for the last six months, and we appreciate it. Yep. Very good. Yeah. And we, we should mention our other sponsors on this tour, Dynamax. Yeah, why don't we take a trip around the uh, the – the photo between behind me and you. So why don't you start at that top left with Dynamax and work your way Dynamax, around. Dynamax, I'm Google. telling you, Brian Clemens and his crew could not have been more welcoming. We drove out to Elkhart. I should say, mention my brother, Michael. And I drove out to Elkhart to pick it up. And um, we got the tour of the RV. And, uh, you know, he spent, and luckily I put it, and, and folks, Jer, I mean, uh, um, Bernie, tell me if you agree with me on this. When you're getting your walkthrough after you buy your RV, and I don't care whether how many RVs you've had, try to video as much of the walkthrough as you possibly can because there is no way that you can remember everything when you're being told by either the uh, salesperson oh, yeah. or service person. Yeah, I, I absolutely yeah. recommend that to all my customers, whether they've had yeah. several campers or not, that yeah. it's important to take a video because you are going to, because you're excited, you're going to forget about 50% of right. what's going on, right? And then, so it's like before you go actually camping, you and your spouse are going to sit there and watch this video and say, oh, yeah, that's where that little switch is, you know? Yeah. And that's so how you get hot water. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's it's That's really how you important. Get electricity. <laughs> because I, I know when we met, like when when you and I met at Campus Inn when you were just starting it, I kind of pointed a couple of things out to you. You asked me a couple of questions, and there was there was some unanswered questions there that needed to be tended yeah. to. So it's yeah. important that everybody take that for granted. Just I, I gotta interject a little bit on the Dynamax because I just heard a rumor that the do it now tour Dynamax is going to end up at a Campers Inn uh, in New Jersey at a, you know, um, Tom's River, New Jersey store. So it's, I'm yeah. very excited to hear that. I'm very excited that Campers Inn continues to, to support the Do It Now tour, and we'll see how that all shakes out. But right. And you actually, want, were, you want to get your hands on that, you're going to call me so I can get you over to my buddies at Tom's River. And the thing is, um, Jacksonville has them also. So we... Um, when we stopped in Jacksonville, there were several other Dynamaxes on the line. Again, right above my head, you see Campers Inn right there. Without them, we had no show. And here's the thing with Campers Inn, and I'm saying this despite the fact that Bernie's here and he works there. It's a pretty refreshing sound and sight that when you're traveling down Interstate 95, that you're never really too far from a Campers Inn. And I know uh, Ben and Jeff, when they were selecting locations to open new lo new stores wanted to be that resource from Maine to Florida, from right. Hampshire to Florida. So support that the customers said, that support them, be there yep. for them. There's right? an hour already thing. Our friends at RV Life Trip Wizard, but without before that. You, before you jump on there, can I, I want to kind of piggyback on you. The Dynamax and the Forest River team were absolutely phenomenal to work yep. with. And they always have been. But I think you'd agree, John, they went above and beyond expectations in delivering a, a beautiful motorhome that caught yep. a lot of attention and you had a chance to do some tours in these campgrounds. Yep. And, and Bob, there are a couple of questions that I had about, about making something work. And I texted Brian Clemens, who's the number one motorized person at Forest River, which is, I believe, the second largest company in the United States. Um, right. And within minutes, I got a text back from Brian saying, oh, that's, that's incredible. Up there, take a look up there. That's absolutely amazing. He's Absolutely. a real guy that really answers his, his text. That's fantastic. Yep. Responds, responds to his customers. And as yep. far as campers in, I think most even know the story. I knew uh, Art and Fran, uh, Jeff's parents, and uh, I'd known them all for, God, almost 
almost 50 years, maybe a little over 40 years. Uh, and I've watched them grow from a single site with pop-up trailers on the front lawn to uh, 36. I think it's 36 now with the last couple yeah, 36. of dealerships yeah. around the Northeast and all the way out to South Dakota. And now they got a big campaign. They bought little dealer, little prices. Uh, Arizona, yeah. Ponte out in the West Coast. She's going to handle the West Coast acquisitions for them. Uh, they've done a great job and they stepped up to the plate and we really appreciate that. So jump over yep. to RV Trip Wizard, John. RV Trip Wizard, uh, I'm telling you, folks, I'm not a technical person, but Walter. I'll, te Walter, I'll, 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 Walter. Testify, I'll testify to that, that you're not a technical person. Right. <laughs> but, but Walter but if, showed if you, how to do if it. You and, were, and, if, wait, John, if you were, you wouldn't eat in Waffle Houses, not a Chef Boy ID cans. <laughs> Oh my gosh. You know what? I don't know if I saw Chef Boy RD down there in the supermarkets. They have uh, spam though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They have stores. some other stuff down there that <laughs> that is kind of frightening when you see that uh, you know whatever. And especially if you go into a deli down south, there's some stuff there that I think the USDA never heard about. Um, although yep. I would tell you one quick story, one crazy thing where I said, remember I said, get off the beaten path, get off the highway and go on the local roads. So we were going from, from, um, the campers in store in uh, Raleigh over to Myrtle beach. And, um, I went off the beaten path and all of a sudden I see a big giant place on the right uh, and it says Smithfield. Now, Smithfield makes bacon. So ah. I see trailer trucks coming out. I see the signs and all that other stuff. And it's about a mile long. And at the, at the other end of the plant, there were stockyards in the back. And there were trailer trucks coming in with the, with the pigs still alive in it. And How I do you think they made bacon, buddy? You got to have pigs. Yeah. Right. These yep. pigs yep. here, when we get out of Myrtle Beach, they ain't going to be around. They're going to be at Walmart or Stop and Shop or Market Basket. But it, it was the whole, it was like the evolution of, of, pig, of bacon, where the, the trucks are coming in with the pigs and they keep them in a, in a storage area. And so then... So do they have a customer walkway so that you could go in and no. see the pigs being unloaded from the truck and then going down no. the, uh, the to the cropping and to the baking and slicing? And, and then at the other end, the package of bacon comes out? It's, no, it's, no. A, it's amazing. When you think about it, like the organics of, of that whole process, right, how it goes from, from a, a live animal to bacon and, and what it has to go through to get there, it's amazing. Yeah. Uh, and it was about a mile long. The plant was about a mile long. Oh my gosh, that's a lot of bacon making. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. So where were we? Oh yeah, yeah, Robert V. Trip Wizard. So they taught us right. where to go. And when we changed the route a couple of times, because originally we were going down to Miami and to Carl Gables, but the heat was so hot in Jacksonville and St. Augustine, we changed the trip and I was able to make that change for it to go up to, um, go up to Atlanta and then we stopped in Penn Dutch country on the way back. Um, hey, Jerry so, yeah, there you go. Oh, Jerry, Jerry same thing with Jerry. Wants, Jerry wants a little bit of credit. Yep. 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 Kind of walk 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 walk. Walk. Also, Walter Swenson, who's not with us tonight right. so far. But yep. uh, they gave John some tips before he uh, yep. plugged it in and navigated. And also, yep. we, should, we should also thank Patrick Buchanan at RV Life Network, uh, who does the tutorials he gave us he did a video for us at the boston show this year on the rv trip wizard that was a big success but uh, who else contributed to uh, at least getting to a point where you had minimal technical expertise to work with rv trip well wizard? ironically the the owner of the company andy rabinowitz um helped me out called me directly and said get online right now he said i'm taking over your computer and showing you how to do it in 15 <laughs> minutes i i was a wizard uh, but I'm telling you, folks, um, you got to use it. I don't even know what it costs, but they have like a seven day free trial. Try it to see if you like it. I guarantee you'll like it because there was one part there where um, it saved me from going under a bridge that wasn't tall enough for our 12 foot, nine inch um, motorhome. 
Right. I'm sure, I'm, I'm sure Brian appreciated you not turning it into a convertible. Right, exactly. Exactly right. Exactly right. So then we have Sun Outdoors, which is at the far right. And Sun Outdoors operates um, several campgrounds. They have a couple up in New England, uh, several in New England now. Uh, Wells Beach Resort is now Sun Outdoors Wells Beach. And there's several up in the Old Orchard Beach area yeah, there's, as well. There's four, there's four sun resorts and, and retreats up here between Old Orchard and Wells Beach. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, Blue Water, which is on the other side, Blue Water manages many of the resorts that are owned by Sun Outdoors. And Blue Water also has several KOAs. Um, yeah, we want the other to... way. Yeah. The other way. There there you go. Go. Yeah. To KOA for providing actually our. Um, What's the name of our charity in New England? Uh, Halo's New Wish regional, New Charity. Not these regional camping charity. Right. Um, they provided two vacations for the Green family from Rhode Island. Uh, two vacations. They're even throwing in a golf cart in that. And they gave them an extra day. We asked for three nights. They gave them four nights and the golf cart. Just, and this, just the they're actually up there right now. This is the second vacation. Oh, just a weekend? They're okay. up there right now. Yeah, they, okay. they arrived the other day. Yeah. And another thing with Easy Care is a name that you don't hear about that much because it's not really that retail. You you buy it through your dealership. Bob, tell tell our audience more about what Easy Care is because Easy I'll tell Care you. is uh, one of our associate members of Nerve, but of and we have many associate members, many dealer members. But I I would say the one who is the most active in finding ways to help our dealers. And to offer, you know, they supported the Northeast Camping Expo last year. They gave presentations at the Boston show. If if we want something, they do it. And when they were actually kind of hurt that they hadn't heard about the Do It Now tour. And I was talking to Ken Rudolph, their uh, rep up here in New England that handles the RV dealers. I said, By the way, you know, John's, John's going to be going out. And he said, I, I don't, you didn't tell me about that. He says, can, can I get involved with it? As you yeah. had, I, I gave him the number. Oh, wow. He says, "He says uh, we're in. Just just count us in." And we sent him an invoice the next day, and they wrote a check. They didn't. Now, they didn't they sound like they sound yeah. like great people, but they do something else good for the RVers, right? So yeah. they're there to protect the RVer as they're going down the road. So they have extended warranties. They have warranties that will, uh, you know, work in towing if necessary, or they'll go out and you know find someone to help you fix your camper on site. Uh, they cover things that sometimes the manufacturer's warranties won't cover. Roadside assistance, all kinds of things that they do. And, and they even can protect the inside and outside of, of your coach too. So they do a lot of great things for the RV industry, like the Do It Now Tour and all these different groups, but they also do wonderful things for their customers as well. Well, you know, yeah. I, I couldn't have said that better, Bernie, because one of the things that's always impressed me about Easy care. Any company in any business is going to do a lot of advertising. They're going to pound their chest, tell you how wonderful they are. These guys don't tell you how wonderful they are. They say, What do you need done? Here's what we can do for you. We'll do it. They pass it. They pass it all out to the dealers. So all the credit goes to the dealers. The customer knows the dealer is taking care of them. But I, there's no there's no ego at Easy Care. Let me tell you. And I've They're real easy to work with. That's for sure. To the top, there is no ego at Easy Care. Yeah, that's and the way this board was set up. Uh, New England RV Dealers uh, Association certainly spearheaded the whole thing, and uh, can't thank them enough. As well as our friends at Woodalls in RV Business, our national our national media sponsors for the tour. And you know, we did a nice interview with. Um, the CFO at Blue Water, and I thought it was a little too technical for a general audience, so we sent it to our friend Ben at Woodalls, and he ran it there in a trade publication. So, so he dumbed it down for you, John. Hmm? He dumbed it down for you. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so you know, the thing is this, folks, um, RVing. There are intangibles that don't fit in a brochure. There are intangibles that if Bernie told you about it when he was selling you something, you'd say that's a that's there's no way that can be true. But until you do it, do it now, until you do it and experience the the intangible joys that you get from being with your family or watching your kids or grandkids 
um, you know, make new friends or, you know, hit, get hit by a wave and, and come out of it. Okay. Um, or go into a playground and find a new ride that they've never had before. It, it's just, it's just absolute magic. And uh, again, 3,400 miles is, it's a long way to drive, especially when you're doing all the driving. And I did, obviously, I yeah. drove every minute of it. John, so John, you tell you us. Laughing. Go ahead, Bernie, go ahead. Yeah, John, tell us about what was your most, you know, intangible, magical moment on the trip, because there might have been several of them. And every time I travel, I know I, I look for those without waiting for them. They just happen, right? Well, you know, one of the special things, and this is what Mila said was her favorite part. Um, we were going to go to a spring, Um and there's several springs in north central Florida that, you know, cold water and and water that is totally clear, unlike the ocean, which you can't even see your knees when you're in it. Um, and we found this spring, not one of the big ones, but like one the of fountain of that lived down there called Salt Springs or Salty Springs, mm -hmm. right in the middle of absolutely nowhere in central Florida. Um, but we found it, it was in a state park and it was a blazing hot day, just like we're experiencing right here in new England. Um, and you walked in that spring and the water is 72 degrees. So first couple of wow. steps is cold, but everybody's in there and the water only is up to your waist and the fish, the stingrays are coming up to you, the fish, the crabs, you can't, you can't take the crabs out of the water there. So um, in the middle of the state, there was salt water with stingrays and crab. Yep. Like, I yep. wonder how that works. I, I know they have a lot of waterways, obviously, but uh, I didn't realize. Yeah, that sounds like, are, that, that's are an that sounds like are amazing blue, down there. Giant blue crabs that, that you couldn't, you know, some places. And I thought it was only salt water, but this was in, in central Florida, right near Palatka. Maybe Anybody want to look that up? It was called Salt Salt Springs. All right. Uh, virtually yeah, dead up. center. John, you often talk about the magic of the campfire. The campfire. Uh, you know, and, and we all, anybody that loves RVing loves the campfire. Was yep. there a uh, particular night around the campfire or a particular story that impressed Mila or the family? You and, and you said, you know, it's three weeks. You never took three weeks. I always found, I think the biggest mistake I made in business was, only taking a one week vacation or a two week. And when I finally get around to doing a three week vacation, by the end of the first week, I realized why I was taking the three week vacation. But yeah. was it something, something around the campfire that particular? Yeah, yeah. there was a campground. Uh, it was in, um, they just changed the name of it from Massey's Landing to Sun Outdoors Rehoboth, Rehoboth Bay. It's in Rehoboth, Delaware, just over the river from over the the Chesapeake Bay from Cape May, New Jersey. And across from us, there were 14 campsites of all either the same family or family and friends. So what they did was they rearranged all, all their RVs in a like a wagon train type thing and had a central spot. And a couple of nights, um, you know, they, they tend to have a few beers, um, <laughs> but they invited us over and we just sat there and, you know, everybody comes up to you. Hi, how are you? You know, what's your name? I don't know you. Well, you don't know me because you don't know me. But that's the thing. Uh, I'm sure all of our audience will agree that uh, probably the easiest place in America to make friends is just walking through a campsite. Walking through a uh, no, walking through a campsite will get you. <laughs> that's not get you that's, there. That's one thing that's you not don't on the to. list, right? Walk through the campsite, but just walk around. And if you want to make friends really faster, uh, open your hood, and you'll have everybody <laughs> come over and say, "Hey, how can I help you? How can I help you?" Well, I have that's nothing great. wrong, but I just want to meet some friends, so I opened my hood. Hey, John. Uh, yes, sir. A, a little earlier today, um, you posted a quote from Wayne Mogul. 
uh, saying, life's journey is not to arrive at the grave safely in a well-preserved body, but rather to skid in sideways, totally worn out, shouting, holy guacamole, what a ride. You know, <laughs> what does that, that mean by I, to I, you? And that's it. I, I mean, look, yeah. at, life is not a spectator sport, okay? And everybody will tell you that the thrill of everything is being part of the action. And with RVing, regardless of what type of action you're looking for, you'll find it there. And right. um, you know what? If you want to go to an RV park and see absolutely nobody, you can do that. If you want to go to an RV park and take advantage of all of the activities, like Carolina Pines, somebody mentioned that earlier today, 888 spots, okay? Um, people from all walks of life. But the interesting part about Carolina Pines, it's right near Myrtle Beach. It's in Conway. The people that were on either side of us at that campground lived in that exact same town. They lived in Conway. One guy said, I live five minutes away. The other guy said, I live 20 minutes away. And yet you'd see people from New York and New Jersey, um, you know, there as well. So um, whatever you want out of camping and RVing, you can get. And again, if Bernie tells you that, oh, you're supposed to tell me that because you're a salesperson. No, it really happens. <laughs> I, I don't sell RVs. I sell RVing. You know, people saw the shirt and they say, what does that mean? Um, you know, a couple of times I had the campers in shirt on. They, they all came up to me and said, I bought this there. I bought this from, from this place. And, you know, um, whatever you want to get, out of your next vacation, you can do it in an RV. Whether you rent one, whether you're towing one, whether you're driving one, or whether you're, and, the, and here's another big, big, big thing down south is RVing without an RV with cabins, tents, yurts. Right. Um, Gotta love because, a yurt. You know, we saw some yurts. I'm trying to figure out where we saw yurts. Yurts are basically a, a round okay. tent. Okay, right. he's got one. Right. Yeah. Well, well, John, that was a very profound answer to a wise guy question because I thought it just meant you like to eat junk food and par uh, junk food and party like a rock star. So, but thank you yeah, for that exactly. lovely profound right. answer. <laughs> yeah. Well, so okay. so nobody nobody really hit your favorite part of the trip. So what I'm going to do because we only had three or four people, and I can't, I was just scrolling up, I can't find it, but we had three or four people that put an idea in there as to what they enjoyed most about your trip. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give a copy of uh, Fanocracy to all of the people that did put in a, con a comment about what they thought was the best part of the trip, because I think everybody might have a different one. I, I, yep. just, I just want to say what an incredible job you did and and understanding it was family time and you know part business part pleasure but just being able to take a trip like that a with your family right. b yeah. to be able to be in campgrounds and talk to other campers and and to showcase why we love to go rving uh bernie what what did you think of it the trip overall because you came into this at you know at the very end you campers didn't join yeah. us and then we took off from merrimack you were there to you know Close the door and before you do that, let me let me show you what it was like for those that didn't. Oh, you got it. Hey, everybody, it's John DePietro. The Do It Now tour continues, and we are in Atlanta, Georgia. Wrong one, sorry. <laughs>
you know, I, I, I just look at what? That, I what a pro. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm sure he was a little bit afraid and, and very excited, uh, but I just love the fact that he waited till his face was fully on camera before he pointed and said, do it now. Uh, yeah. John's a real pro. John, John doesn't miss a camera, Bernie. You no, know, he Jerry doesn't wrote. miss a cue. <laughs> Jerry wrote, next time, do six months. I had, bre I had breakfast with Mila today, and I said to her, Wait, wait you know, a minute. Today? Today. After, after three He's weeks. not yet? Yeah. She didn't want some time. Yeah, exactly. She yeah, I know. <laughs> so, but listen, I said to her, Mila, was there anything about that trip that you would have liked to have done that we didn't do? And she said, well, yes, Papa. I said, what's that? She said, next year, let's do the whole perimeter of the country because all we did this time was the East Coast. <laughs> Is that all? <laughs> Wow, what an yeah. answer! Yeah. She wants to like yeah. she wants to be hanging out with you quite a bit. That's fantastic. Yeah, and I said, you know, there's five other grandkids that we have to take care of, and she said, yeah, but a bigger bus. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know it. But that is just the right size. I'll tell you, folks, 33 feet is a great size because uh, once I think you get into 38 and 40, if you miss a street or a turn. You've got to go a long way before you can just turn around. Hey, um, hey, hey Jim, Ke Jim Keenan joined us from his recuperation of his knee replacement. He says, you should have hit the horns. Yeah, John, I did that a few times. Yeah, Jim, at that point, he was lucky to find the gas pedal. Well, <laughs> I know. I was scared. He was trying stiff. to get out of the parking lot. Let me tell you one thing about those horns. I had those two big air horns up top here. And just before we're on our way, we're on our way back. We're just north of Charlotte and heavy traffic. And there's a car coming into the highway on the right. That's not noticing me. So I'm looking at the car on the right and I blow the horn. Little did I know I've got six motorcyclists to the left of me that all gave me a one finger salute. <laughs> <laughs> you probably shook them out of their britches. Yeah. yeah. They're riding a bike. Whoa. <laughs> what the yeah. Uh, and, and those air horns. This is not the regular horn. These are air horns. Oh, yeah, they're pretty loud. So, yeah. hey, John, hey. I just want to thank you for all that you did, you know, on this Do It Now tour. It's such a great representation of what the RV lifestyle is all about and, you know, why it's so important to spend time with your family and friends. And I know Campers Inn is so excited to have been part of this whole thing and that you went and, and joined us at several of our dealerships and, and and represented us well too. But, you know, that's, it brings the spirit of family, which, you know, I know we're founded on and, and the yep. whole RV industry is about family. And, it's all about and family. I, I talk to people every day, you know, they, they could be getting ready for retirement. They're just getting their first camper. And I'm like, you don't realize that you're going to become, like the favorite aunt or the favorite right. grandmother or the, or the favorite, grandmother. you know, cousin, you, yeah. all of a sudden your family is going to just merge on you and, and you're going to be great news is you're stuck with them for the rest of your life. But yeah. you know, you yeah. are, you know, camping does bring families together and they stay together. You see yeah. multi-generations camping oh. together oh. and it's Bernie, good. We saw, we yeah. saw so many multi-generation campers on this tour. You know That's what? Fantastic. Oh, man, if people haven't seen it yet, I would encourage them to go back down on our Facebook page here and watch the video that John did with Jeff and Ben Hirsch, because yeah. that 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 is representative of what they were able to build such a great company on, because they were a family to begin with, and they right. consider every one of their customers part of the family. But watch watch that video and see how committed they are to their company and, and their dealers, uh, their, their customers rather. Uh, it, it really speaks volumes. And I want to thank Ben and Jeff for, you know, jumping on board with us here. We were, you know, we were kind of a long shot. We were just two crazy guys from Boston that thought we had a, a pretty good idea when we put this thing together. But I can tell you because of John DePietro, it exceeded any expectations that we had. And we're going to do this again next year. I'm going to give fair warning, folks. Yep. We're going to do, we're going to do, we're going to do it again next year. It's going to be bigger. Well, we might better. be able to get two tours going. You got you go your way, I'll go my way. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah you get a you get a convoy going on. Yeah, we gotta do this right. Bernie, uh, do you still have your lyrics? Do you want to one more time? Do you want to give? Oh John yeah, I can just. Go. We, we got to end it on that. All right, bring back, bring back, bring back our Johnny to me, to me. Bring back, bring back. Oh, bring back my Johnny to me. All right, <laughs> Bernie. And, and I want to thank you, Bernie, for co-hosting the show the last four weeks. And I want to make sure people understand that because we have such a great talent in Bernie that now when John and I want to take a week off, then we've got a permanent host. Bernie will be our permanent replacement when he, if he's I'll available. Be when, when John and I want to uh, take a day off because we can, we can go away for a week. We don't even have to watch the show because we know Uncle Bernie's going to do a fantastic job for us. Yeah. Thank you Absolutely. so much for having me this last four weeks. It's been phenomenal spending time with you, watching this whole thing transpire. And I'll tell you, you guys are a class act. Thank you so much for letting me join in. Thanks, well, everyone. Glad to have you. Okay, we're going to hit the close button. Give us your comments before. Oh, one last thing. I have, I have been guilty because I am the producer of the show besides being the best looking host on the show <laughs> please if if you've never done it before this time oh yeah please write to all your friends and say you gotta watch this particular show because this is the show about what our being is all about share it like it uh encourage your friends to watch it we we just have so much fun every week that we forget to you know put that little plug in there so I, I thank you for that, and we will close out the show, and we will see you next week. This edition of RVing in New England was a presentation of the New England RV Dealers Association. Thanks for watching, and be sure to like us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram.